this discussion on the usage of uh, English in higher education or among the masses in Malaysia is done in the Institute of uh, Tun Dr. Mahadi Muhammad Stott, University Utara Malaysia on the 3rd of uh, November 2014. Uh, the discussion on English, uh, on English language usage in the flat world uh, is done between me, uh, Professor Dr. Abdul Rahman, and Mr. Victor Chan. Mr. Victor Chan is the senior lecturer uh, in English in the School of uh, uh, Languages and Education in Northern uh, North University Utara, Malaysia. He was also the special advisor of English to the university, uh, who was once um, attached to the chancery and uh, he was the one who advised the vice chancellor on uh, English on Eng uh, in English on speeches writing and so on I am glad to be uh, to be with him this afternoon uh, to explore further uh, regarding the English uh, the status of English in Malaysia uh, Mr. Witter uh, first and foremost, please uh, define language as a way of uh, human interaction and communication. Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor, <coughs> for this uh, opportunity to share some views on this. It's a very interesting question. I would like to say that actually, uh, language, whether it's English or Bahasa Indonesia, Mandarin, uh, any language at all for that matter, human language, is uh, mother of all tools. Yes. And uh, we communicate using language, we communicate using this tool. So, we actually uh, are wired to acquire language. Whether you are uh, uh, Chinese and English men or you know, uh, of whatever nationalities, you acquire your first language, your mother tongue. So the problem arises is when the, we have to acquire a second or a third language. Yes. And uh, therefore we acquire languages in different uh, uh, situations, whether it's a first language, second language, and in the context of uh, Malaysia, it is in the context of English as a second language which therefore says that English has a certain position in the country, unlike other countries where it is considered a foreign language. So we are better off in, in, in Malaysia because we were once a colony of uh, Britain. So the legacy is there, our education system, uh, medium of instruction uh, were conducted in English. But because of <coughs> Uh, developments in the education uh, system, we had uh, gradually phased out the use of English as the main medium of instruction and uh, we have uh, still English as a second language. Uh, so the problem now is there has been a marked uh, deterioration in the uh, standard of English amongst our uh, school uh, students and also in the tertiary institutions. So what are the factors which have given rise to this? I think there are several factors uh, in terms of uh, social, cultural uh, and also policy issues. Yes. Right. Uh, can you uh, impact, you know, uh, since the British came over to Malaysia around 1874, in around 1900, 1905 and so on, uh, English uh, education was started by the British. And we have the prominent school, for example, like a Penang Preschool. Uh, we have the King George in uh, Taipei. You have the Victoria Institution in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, during that period, uh, English was the medium of uh, administration. Yes. 
English was the medium of business. And when we uh, achieved our independence in 1957, English is still uh, used as the, the main medium of instruction. But it was uh, disrupted in 1969, what we call the racial clash between the Malays and the non-Malays. And in 1970, we started, we started what we call the implementation of the national education policy. From that on, we gave the period of nine years, I think, from 1970 to 1979. And after that, we have only uh, Malay, uh, we have only secondary school. The medium instruction is in Bahasa Melayu. And can you elaborate on, on the point of uh, how language nationalism, how language in nationalism, sometimes, uh, sometimes you have a very irrational choice. Never realize that, you know, in the world there should be a language for a human being to communicate between one and another. That's a very interesting perspective of uh, the language uh, use policy mm. and uh, <coughs> I think because of one's interpretation of uh, being a nationalist, being patriotic, mm. yes. so as has been pointed out by uh, former Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir, you are actually a more patriotic and nationalistic person. Mm. If you acquire a second language uh, other than your national language mm. in order to serve your nation, Yes. Right. So the other extreme is to interpret the fact that uh, you should, of course, give uh, prominence uh, to the national language, but it's not a zero-sum game yes. in the sense that once you use the national language, you should put aside all the other languages. Yes. So in the context of the 21st century and globalization, look, what has happened is that borders, national borders are no longer there. So we can't speak of, uh, uh, you know, one imposing one's national language on other nations. Mm -hmm. So uh, Thomas Friedman in the flat world says yeah. that, you know, uh, we went through uh, globalization 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. So at different stages, uh, the nation figures prominently. But in the context of a borderless world, uh, yes, we still have our nation states. We still have uh, our national policies. We still have a policy saying that, well, this is the national language of the country. There's no denying it. Yes. People are amazed that I can uh, conduct myself very well in meetings or making speeches in Bahasa uh, Malaysia. Mm. Uh, and that, that I have gained because I have used the national language. I went through the uh, system where I have to learn Bahasa Malaysia. Mm. But that does not mean that I neglect the acquisition of English or Mandarin or even Thai right now because yeah. I have to work with the Thais yes. in terms of uh, cross-border collaboration between UUM and Haja University. Okay. So in that context, I think uh, we tend to always have a pendulum swing, you know, and, and go to the extreme. Uh, we should not forget that, yes, we do agree that we have national policies, we accept the fact that the national language is Bahasa, but you are also uh, a patriotic, a nationalist in the sense that you have acquired a different language in order to serve your nation well. Okay, thank you very much for the question. And I think uh, since our first Prime Minister, Tengku Abdul Rahman Putra al Hash, then in 1971, Tun Abdul Razak Hussein, 1976, uh, Tun Hussein On, uh, 1981, Tun Dr. Mahathir Muhammad, 2003, Abdullah, Tun Abdullah Ahmad Badawi, 2009, Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak. All our Prime Malaysian Prime, Prime Ministers, they can, uh, they can speak English very well. And this is one of the uh, prime opportunity for Malaysia to be a part of the uh, world stage. 
because we are able to speak English. And we in Malaysia also, there is a statistic that says uh, uh, that says that uh, forty that says that forty nine uh, forty. Forty-nine percent of the the services, fifty-five percent of the school-going children in the rural areas, they prefer mathematics and science to be taught in English. Okay, fifty-five percent, and that shows that uh, the step taken by Tun Dr Mahathir in two thousand and three was right. But suddenly, due to the uh, due to the linguistic nationalism, in two thousand nine, we divert back the policy of not teaching mathematics and science in English. What do you think? <laughs> this this is a this is a policy issue, hmm. and uh, we academics feel that of course uh, we have. Uh, Groups of people doing the research and coming out with uh, uh, conflicting statistics as to the reception of use of English uh, in the teaching of English uh, of uh, mathematics and, and science, science. Uh. attempts, right? So, <coughs> um, language is something that you cannot uh, learn overnight, mm -hmm. and therefore, if we do not give it a certain period of time to uh, prove itself and making a switch uh, at the whims and fancies of uh, powers that be yes then we I'm afraid uh, it is not informed decision in the sense that um, uh, it has not taken into consideration the views of uh, the people who are the stakeholders like the School going children yes. based on the survey, mm. the uh, academics who are uh, in the field, and therefore, all these views, once they have been gathered and uh, presented to the uh, decision makers, uh, it is beyond our control. Yes, right? So, mm. uh, whatever uh, it is, uh, policies can change. And it is our hope that uh, in, in the light of globalization, and the reality is even in, in, in France, in other countries, they are t mm. using English, the last bastion of uh, na nationalistic fervor on the use of uh, French, mm. you know, uh, re resorting back to English in the teaching of physical education. Yes. Right. And if you look at the available uh, international uh, news channels, Fon Sanquet, uh, France 24, which I like to watch on cable TV, satellite TV, you are amazed at the way they've conducted themselves uh, in terms of uh, bringing to the f uh, local audience as well as the international community the importance of the use of English in getting you know, views, news and views from all over the world. Yes, because you know, I've been in Japan uh, way back in 1989 and in Japan, though it is uh, referred as a model country of uh, using the mother tongue uh, and people say Japan also uh, prosper because now they are using a single language but don't forget in Japan they, are, they began to learn English 30 years ago and I remember when I was uh, visiting the museum in Hiroshima how uh, seven to ten years old uh, pupils of the primary school they came over to any foreigners with a piece of paper started from asking name where do you come from why you come to Japan and the pupil must write in English all the answers that we give them and uh, this is a way of learning English in Japan okay and uh, if we were to look forward, next year, we have the ASEAN Community right. 2015. Uh, deep in my thought, 
I think the the language of the uh, the 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 medium of uh, communicating between one uh, ten of the ASEAN country will be English. Yes, it is interesting that you uh. point this out. I uh, am involved in with universities in Thailand, mm -hmm. and they are very excited about the ASEAN economic uh, community. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you know, at one time the debate was actually between the use of English and Malay because Malay speakers in ASEAN region is mm. quite huge yes. in Indonesia, Brunei and Malaysia. Uh. But finally the ASEAN the, um, Council uh, community decided that it should be English because we want to look beyond the ASEAN yes. region. Yes. Because we have to, as a bloc in ASEAN, we have to also interact with the mm. rest of the world. But that brings me back to... Uh, uh, Friedman's idea of the flat world mm -hmm. and back to the previous question you see when when the nation decided at one point in time to revert to Bahasa Malaysia which uh, has its rationale as well we wanted to promote the use of uh, Malay mm -hmm. uh, and come out with our own uh, uh, books publications uh, just as like in the uh, in, in uh, uh, Japan and in Germany mm -hmm. all right but what has happened in that, when this took place, something else happened with the use of the internet, with uh, social internet. media, yes, and so on. Yes. yes, that suddenly mm -hmm. this whole idea of, of playing catching up was no longer viable, in the sense that it has is so extensive and widespread that we cannot play catch up. Mm -hmm. and come up with our own publication uh, trying to develop our own science and technology using the national language. Uh, UKM has done very well in terms of uh, uh, using the national language. Fine, we should continue with that. But on the other hand, as I have mentioned earlier, it's not a zero-sum game. You, you cannot say that we focus on this and we will neglect uh, the use of English. Yes. And all the more in the context of flat world, because if you do not accept the reality that uh, you are now competing in the f uh, competing in the flat world, whereby the language, the mother of all tools, is the English language. Yes. Uh, and therefore, you would have to uh, uh, take advantage of this fact that it is a flat world now. We can compete if we have that. Tool. Yes. In fact, like uh, mentioned by Tun Dr. Mahathir Muhammad, uh, not because uh, he is not nationalistic of, of, uh, of promoting English in 2003, but you know, his uh, hel helicopter view <laughs> of the world, his, uh, his helicopter view of the world, because you know, something is lacking if you can only uh, speak can only communicate in one language because the knowledge the production of knowledge in the world is still English I think you you I, I must uh, commend you on your view of the mm. fact when we first started this session uh -huh. is that you see after all language is a human invention it's God given to us. God given to All right. us. Yeah. So we should not differentiate uh, that it belongs to that community and therefore uh, it is their whole, uh, what do you call, uh, possession. It does not belong to the human race yes. as a whole. Yes. So in learning another language, I like mm -hmm. your perspective when you say that, you know, being a human language, English, Malay, you know, people are interested in learning Malay because they're also interested in knowing the Malay psyche. Yes. the Malay cultural view. Mm. So as you pointed out, the well of uh, of uh, different cultures is yes. within the language. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a third generation Chinese, but I eat, sleep and think in English because mm. I went to an English school. Mm -hmm. And my regret now is I only have a very uh, limited uh, proficiency of uh, Mandarin. I can only speak, cannot write mm. in the language. You, you, are, uh, you speak, your dialect is Hokkien. Hokkien, all right. Yeah. So I have no access to uh, 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 knowledge and literature in, in Chinese. Yes. Right. I can read Malay, I can uh, read English. So 
in that sense, my access to the world's repository of knowledge is also limited because yes. of the number of languages that I, I have. Impact, impact, you know. Uh, when I was in secondary school, uh, we have two uh, subjects of English. One is English itself, where you learn grammar, verbs, and so on. And the other one, you have the English literature. I remember when I was the, in, in the lower secondary school, uh, we used Hikayat Hantuah, the sto uh, Hikayat Abdullah, the story of Abdullah. Uh, Abdullah wrote uh, Hikayat Hantuah in Malay and it was translated into English. We use it in form, in, in remo in form 1, form 2. And we have the other books on the uh, Galit was travels, uh, traveling the world in 80 days. Right. And in the upper secondary, form 4, form 5, we have the Macbeth by the Shakespeare. Shakespeare. And we have the Lord of the Flies. Right. So this is the literature, the known literature we, uh, we read in the secondary schools. What do you think of uh, uh, materials? Like, for example, like uh, newspaper articles, uh, literature as the way of uh, way of um, welcoming to the, uh, to, the, the to the to the English language. Right. Yes, uh, these are all cultural artifacts. You know, uh, the language is one cultural artifact as a mm. tool. Then, in the language is expressed in. In, in the form of literature, yes. as in all those titles that you yeah. mentioned, in the books, in the audio materials, in the movies, yes. and so on and so forth. So, uh, once you have the key, which is the language, then mm -hmm. you can you can tap, or you can, uh, or you have the potential to use the other tools, which is those cultural artifacts yes. like the the wealth of uh, knowledge in the literature, wealth of knowledge in in other cultural aspects, dances, music, whatever. Yes. So that fits in very well with uh, language teaching principles that we not only talk about grammar, we not only talk about uh, you know the rules of a language. We encourage uh, our learners to acquire language through I learn Japanese through singing songs. Yes. My Japanese sensei mm. taught us to Japanese by learning how to sing Japanese songs. Yes. So. Uh, I would say yes. Therefore, you see, our, a lot of our teenagers, a lot of our school-going children, uh, actually prefer uh, to learn beyond the school because school is not interesting. <laughs> In the sense that you see now with the social media, and with so all on. those. No, I remember, yeah. you know, one one of the greatest <laughs> contribution by uh, Adibah Amin. Mm. One of the he was she was a teacher. Yes. She was a journalist, a great Good journalist. Writer. A good writer. Yes. In fact, he translated mm. more than ten books yes. into uh, English. Yes. Uh, I like to refer one is the uh, the work by by the National Laureate yes. Shahnon Ahmad. Right. For example, like uh, uh, Rentung, mm. she translated it into the Ash. Mm. Uh, Ranjau Sepanjang Jalan, Tons All the Way. And, and she translated uh, Merpati Putih Terbang Lagi by Khadijah Hashim to The White Doves Flies Again. Mm. And she translated the uh, the work by Anwar Ridwan, Hari-Hari uh, Terakhir Seorang Seniman, into uh, The Last Day of an Artist. I think uh, for a writer, for, for, for a student, uh, like let's say a Malay student, I think this this type of translation should be used as the medium of instruction, because like you said just now, the wealth and chong of the Malays mm -hmm. are in the Malay novels yes. or in the in or, or in the Indonesian novel. Uh, it is much easier for a student to understand. That's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, for example, like reading a uh, lot of the flies. If you are not from that culture. You don't really grasp the concept of the uh, language in the text, so that's why it takes somebody like Adiba Amin to do the translation. Mm -hmm. But having said that, I would say, if an Englishman or 
like myself, I read those translated works of Shahnon Ahmad. Mm. I am so thrilled by reading the secondary source, which is the translation. Yes. I would perhaps be interested to read the original. Okay. Right? So yes. that is what language does. It doesn't matter what language you use. All right? So that is why, yes, credit to the translators. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. But... You know, when we get to love a language, we begin to see the beauty of language, and we like to go back to the primary source. You know, in this case, the Malay language. Mm -hmm. Malay language. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there is no uh, discrimination in the sense that you know uh, whatever can be expressed in English can be expressed in Malay. There's no yes. doubt about that. There's no doubt. For example, that. like you know, I I I I'm interested in in the Chinese culture, so I read Lim Yu Tang. Taiwanese uh, scholar right. who lives in America and he write a lots of books on the Chinese. Uh, for example, uh, my people, my country. Uh, and when asked by the uh, one of the journalists in, in Taiwan, how do you feel writing uh, about the Chinese in English? And he said, you know, not so special lah because you know. <laughs> Uh, I should be writing about the Chinese in Mandarin, but I try to introduce my people to the world. A very good point, Prof. I was in a recent uh, conference in Taiwan on uh, academic publishing, mm -hmm. and we broke into groups discussing whether. Uh, people in Taiwan should still continue to publish in Mandarin, uh, publish in English, and those from other countries as well who have mm. this issue with publishing in English. And, and precisely is this issue is that if you publish in English, you make available your work to a wider audience. All right. So you have to make a choice. Yes, you can still publish in, 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 in Mandarin, mm. as you said, and as Mr. Lin Lim Yu Tang, Lim Yu Tang uh, so pointed uh, out. You see, he wants other uh, speakers, uh, of other speakers of other languages, to access this wealth and this beauty of life in his country. Yes. So he has chosen to write in English. Yeah. Now he has generated that interest, and therefore mm. the question arises: Why don't you write in Chinese in the first yes. place? All right. So probably he can take up the project. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, because, because you know. Uh, our main hindrance of uh, learning English in Malaysia is uh, if I look at this thing at three level, at the level of the agent, uh, level of the structure, and level of the culture. Now, the agent is the student, the learners, the person. Uh, second thing is about the uh, the structure, the institution the ministry, the university, and so on. Third one is the culture. I think, you know, Mr. Victor, if you can explore, our main hindrance of learning second language, or in Malaysia, we call it memartabatkan uh, bahasa Melayu, memperkasakan bahasa Inggris. I think the problem is culture. Uh, we'll talk at two levels. One, uh, elaborate on, on on the aspect of culture, then how to overcome the problem of culture, hindrance. I, I think, you know, in my student days, I studied uh, linguistics and historical linguistics and uh, about anthropology, things, social sciences. And so I got interested in language. Mm. And language is not... Uh, what many people think it is. It is a living thing. Yes. So language has a life of its own. If there are users, unlike Latin, there are no users, that's yes. why it's become a dead language. Yes. But still, Latin is, is on the map, language yes. map, and we still have books on Latin and people yes. trying to learn the language. It's just that they have very few uh, people to uh, talk to, you know, interact in terms of using Latin. Mm. So when you talk about um, m m we, we have this thing about you know uh, putting the language at a higher level yes uh, 
I think language, all right, has a life of its own. Uh, it's a beautiful language, Malay. Mm -hmm. All right, you look at the Piramli movies in those days yes. uh, during my generation, uh, the the songs and so on and so forth. Language takes care of itself mm -hmm. in the sense mm -hmm. that you know if the if the users are there. Uh, of course, we have uh, we have uh, institutions to monitor to to try the, the, to, the, yeah. the, the metamorphosis of the what? yeah the, the, the language, language the, yeah. Yeah. but but language has its own dynamics mm -hmm. all right so too much uh, concern over the fact that we should uh, have uh, this rule and that rule and so on and so forth will stifle. Mm -hmm. language growth mm -hmm. in that sense and uh, therefore that's why you look at English English is a very much a living language and thriving that it actually absorbs words and, and, and you know from look, other cultures for example yes they in 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 each in each in the uh, ASEAN region yeah. you have uh, if you were to take a flight from uh, Manila airline or, or Philippines yes. airline, you have the uh, Philippines English. Yes. Uh, if you like, if you take a uh, mass, yes. you have the going places. Yes. It's a Malay, a Malaysian English. Yes. Yes. Uh, for example, if you like the Singapore Airlines, Singapore English. Very interesting point you brought out, Professor, mm. because uh, it's been some time that. Uh, the language uh, uh, experts in the area have talked about world Englishes, different types of different English, types yes. of Englishes. Yeah. Of course, there is the uh, we make fun of the use of Minglish as in Malaysian yeah. English, uh, Singlish as in Singapore English. Mm. You know, but the the truth of the matter is, there is a language continuum. On the one extreme, we have vernacular proficiency. And then yes. we have native language proficiency. Okay. So we move along this continuum, you see. So nobody becomes a good English speaker overnight. I am not a native speaker, mm -hmm. so I do not speak uh, British English RP all the time, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so I am along that continuum. So are my students along that continuum. And therefore we should accept that fact. And therefore yes. when we say memperkasakan bahasa English, yeah. We want to enhance the proficiency See, of, of English. English, uh, English. Yeah. So, in terms of using English beyond the classroom to interact with uh, tourists, with uh, visitors, that's why many visitors to Malaysia are very impressed that they can get along with Malaysian because not only are we friendly, we are also friendly because we have the language. To we have the language. I remember when, when, when I did my PhD in London way back in 1990s, I remember that it was uh, instructed it was suggested by the BBC uh, for for a uh, for a Queen English. Yes. So they encourage uh, the viewers to view. Uh, I forgot the name of the news reader, but he's from Caribbean. Uh -huh. Is he? Uh, yes. uh, so yeah. that type of English yes. is to call the Queen English. We enjoy series uh, like uh, Yes, Mr. Prime Minister, uh -huh. and then that's a good example of you know uh, 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 Queen's English or uh, native variety. Yes. Yeah, but but all over the world now we accept the fact that uh, we would bring we would like to bring the learners along this continent. Yes, I I I I'm, 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 yes. I really agree, and I appreciate. Uh, about the continuum from the mm. vernacular yes. to the uh, what you call it a native right. speaker, yes. Yes. okay? Yes. And English is this sort is it is this is what 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 was wanted what is wanted by Tun Dr Mahathir Muhammad. And recently, if you remember, uh, there was a suggestion by the deputy min uh, prime minister. Uh, at the same time, he is the Minister of Education, uh, Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin, to make English compulsory in the territory education. Yes, 
he again brought this matter up mm-hmm. uh, and said that uh, details will be revealed soon mm-hmm. and uh, um, that But then uh, a recent again announcement that uh, we refer, of course, to the Malaysian University English Test uh, yes. Benchmark, uh-huh. and uh, the Deputy Minister of Education too has mentioned that actually the autonomy of the various universities there's a certain degree of flexibility in how they choose to adopt which benchmark for what courses. Mm-hmm. I right? think I think that, yeah. that, that uh, like we discussed in the Senate. It's not. Uh, it's not English. Uh, it's not English in terms of the. Uh, the 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 parts of the language, lah. For example, like verbs, grammar, and so on, but more on the communication of English. This is back to the culture because you know, once you create the culture of uh, second, not not, don't regard English as second language. Regard English as an import is one of the language uh, for you to live in the uh, globalized world, and knowing other languages is not a hindrance to patriotism and on so on, but you can enrich yourself uh, to 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 sources of to source of knowledge. Right, but yes. Uh, that is why when I was uh, heading the English language uh, department in, in, in UUM, we we uh, UUM being a management university. oriented university, mm-hmm. of course we have uh, a certain expectation of tertiary students to be able to write academic English, mm-hmm. right? But we cannot bring them to that level of uh, our expectation. Mm-hmm. Or the benchmark that we have set, if we cannot lay the foundation, like you mentioned, basic interpersonal communication skills. Yes. So they would have to go through a certain period of uh, language experience in getting acquiring the ability to communicate in basic English. Uh, nothing to do with academic uh, content. Once they have gone through that stage. Then, being tertiary students uh, in terms of graduate employability, in terms of feedback from industry, mm-hmm. we would expect them, as based on the survey, that the industry has no time to to train. Yes, and they would expect our graduates to have a certain level of uh, academic, prof- uh, academic English proficiency. Mm-hmm. So the second stage is uh, known as a cognitive academic uh, language proficiency skills. So, like for instance, in UM we have public speaking, we have a uh, report, business report writing, uh, professional communication. Even at master's level, we have a professional seminar which is conducted in English. Yes. All right. Uh, so, what this means is that yes, once you have a certain uh, foundation in in getting yourself uh, understood, you are, you may not be speaking Queen's English. But then you are ready to take on uh, a certain uh, higher level of uh, skills, especially in reading academic texts, yes. uh, writing academic, and it's a whole uh, different ball game in the sense that you know to be able to have that uh, to to enter into the culture, you know, of uh, being a, a member of the academic community. So even as undergraduate students or postgraduate students, you have to write. In uh, the sense that you're using academic template, academic language, academic vocabulary. Yeah. So, uh, whether we like it or not, at the university, we do have that higher level of expectation. And that is why, uh, when when the leaders of the nation mention that, okay, we expect our students to pass English at the tertiary level before yes. they can graduate, mm-hmm. is precisely because. The feedback from industry, and in terms of graduate employability, we do need you to move beyond just basic uh, communication skills during the interview. They expect you to have a certain uh, acquire a certain skill in being able to make uh, effective presentations. Yes. That's why we have public speaking. Okay, thirty minutes.
Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wee Chan. I think we have a very fruitful discussion. And inshallah, uh, the seminar in the future, Mr. Wee Chan will be able uh, to come to Solo. And my thank you to uh, Mr. Wee Chan and for the participant of the seminar. And we hope uh, in the future we will come in person. Right. But this time round, I think uh, because due to our constraint in UUM, we will have our convocation on the 8th until 12th. And uh, till we meet again, bye bye. Thank you very much. What are you going to do?